Welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. A 62-year-old female I diagnosed with eosinophilic asthma a couple years prior returns to my clinic for follow-up. We talked about her therapy for asthma as she was on inhalers and a biologic called Nucala or Mepolizumab. We also talked about work as she's a dialysis nurse. But just as we were walking out of the door, she mentions a rash on her thigh. Her dermatologist has been dealing with it. I turned her around to head back in the patient room to talk about this rash. On today's episode, I'm going to tell you why. I've talked about the eosinophil before. Remember, there are all sorts of white blood cells that work in your body. The eosinophil is a white blood cell heavily associated with allergy in the Western world, and its presence can lead to significant tissue damage. There are a ton of diseases where the eosinophil is the problem. Hypereosinophilic syndrome, eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis, eosinophilic asthma, chronic rhinocytositis with nasal polyposis, eosinophilic pneumonia, just to name a few. Today, I want to talk about my 62-year-old patient who I diagnosed with eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis, or EGPA. EGPA is an eosinophilic vasculitis, but what the hell does that mean? Well, it means the eosinophil, which is that white blood cell I explained associated with allergy, infiltrates small to medium-sized blood vessels causing occlusion and inflammation. It's an autoimmune disease that I see not infrequently. But if you don't recognize the condition, it can destroy your body. EGPA is what we call an ANCA-associated vasculitis, or an AAV. There are a few others like microscopic polyangitis, granulomatosis polyangitis, and renal-limited vasculitis. But just because it's ANCA-associated doesn't mean EGPA has to be ANCA-positive. In fact, only 40% of the time is EGPA ANCA positive. Now let's talk about ANCA and what that means. ANCA stands for anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody. Basically, the plasma cell ends up producing antibodies against the neutrophil. More specifically, these antibodies attack or bind to molecules within the neutrophil granules. These molecules are myeloperoxidase, proteinase 3, human neutrophil elastase, and lysosome-associated membrane glycoprotein 2. Some of these molecules are proteases, some do other things, but the point is to understand that they are that, just a molecule in your body that serves a function. Now with EGPA, there are three main clinical characteristics that are present whether you are ANCA positive or ANCA negative. These are asthma, chronic rhinocytositis with nasal polyposis, and eosinophilia. If you're ANCA positive, you are more likely to have kidney involvement with glomerulonephritis, nerve involvement with peripheral neuropathy, mononeuritis multiplex, and skin involvement with purpura, my patient's rash. If you're ANCA negative, which is more common in eGPA, you will have lung involvement, gotta know this as a pulmonologist, with CT scans showing ground glass opacity like this among cavitary lesions at times, cardiac involvement, and gastrointestinal involvement. Again, this is pretty easy, but remember, disease doesn't read books. This isn't all or none, and it requires you to think and ask questions. There are three phases with eGPA, a prodromal or allergic phase, an eosinophilic phase, and a vasculitic phase. I'd like to get to the point where we don't reach the vasculitis stage, because asthma actually precedes vasculitis by seven to eight years. In other words, you got seven to eight years to catch up. And since we may be treating a systemic disease only locally with inhalers, we're not recognizing it. That's a problem. Here's another kicker. Patients may take up to 56 months having this condition without being diagnosed, which means they're not treated. What's 56 divided by 12? It's 4.6 years. That's unacceptable in my book, and that's why I educate. When we think about the immunology of specifically eGPA, we understand the eosinophil is heavily involved and due to the release of molecules within the eosinophil granules, this leads to infiltration of the tissue with other immune cells. These are mostly type 2 inflammatory cells, so the cytokines interleukin-5, interleukin-13, and interleukin-4 are involved. 
Now that we know clinically how to evaluate for the condition, let's talk about how to assess the severity. Typically, we use the BBAS score. This stands for Birmingham Vasculitis Activity Score. This documents new or worsening vasculitis and consists of a set of items divided into nine organ systems. Remember vasculitis is inflammation of the blood vessels which are located throughout the body. You have to ask yourself when performing the BVAS if the abnormality is present, if it can be attributed to vasculitis, and if it's new. The score max is actually 63. Once you assess this, we start thinking about therapy. So let's begin to think about what therapy would be. We know this is an autoimmune disease, so any medication that tells the immune system to shut up, we would use. Generally speaking, we start with PO prednisone, and then we will graduate from there. My problem with graduating to other medicines is it's based on life-threatening injury. Again, I ask, why would I wait until an organ develops a life-threatening injury? It just doesn't make sense. I've always recognized the stupidity in this. The main drugs we would graduate to are cyclophosphamide, rituximab, which inhibits cells that have the CD20 receptor, B cells, plasma cells, azathioprine, methotrexate, and mycophenolate mofetil. These are all drugs that inhibit the immune system in some way, shape, or form. A relatively newer monoclonal antibody called mepolizumab, brand name Nucala, shows significant efficacy in EGPA as well. This drug inhibits the cytokine interleukin-5, a type 2 cytokine that's also heavily involved in asthma. I've spoken about this previously because IL-5 is responsible for eosinophil maturation. It's like the mama of the eosinophils. The IL-5 receptor has also been seen on fibroblasts, B cells, basophils, and at times the airway epithelial cell. Again, an overactive amount of IL-5 has been implicated in a few diseases like EGPA, hyper-eosinophilic syndrome, or HES, eosinophilic asthma, eosinophilic pneumonia, and chronic rhinocytositis from nasal polyposis, among others. Mepolizumab has indications in several of these eosinophilic diseases. I want to encourage all of you to understand cytokine biology, and I hope you guys learned about a rare but common condition called EGPA. We'll see you next time. Thank you.